Hey guys, thank you for coming to Ola Wave channel. We're a channel that's focusing on reading the latest archive work on speech and NLP processing. Today, we're going to be reviewing a, a paper that was published about two years ago, which title is LoRa, Low Rank Adaptation of Large Language Models. And this paper is becoming interesting again because since 2022, starting from Meta AI, the Institute have been releasing a lots of large language models, including Llama and different kinds of models named after um, the animals. Um, and there's a lot of requirement or need there for uh, fine-tuning fine on top of these models. Um, the fine-tuning including, uh, suppose you want to leverage the large language model for your, for your vertical task, for example, QA, then you, you probably have to, you have to think about how to tweak the parameters in the large language model. And sometimes, People, even although this is a, a general AI uh, issue, but some people they are saying that they still have a need of tuning the pre-trained model. Um, so th this is very very popular, and th and this is why this paper is getting a lot of attention nowadays. That's why the reason why we wanna uh, revisit the paper and see what it does and uh, what the Im implication it has on our future model fine tuning. Um, well, first of all, at the year of 2021, OpenAI has already released the GPT-3, which is 175 billion parameters. There's a, this is why the Microsoft people start to see whether they can uh, fine tune this model, okay? At that time, I think, um, they were not very uh, that interested in, or over that time, ChatGPT was not that popular because, as you can imagine, that uh, the instruction instruct GPT paper hasn't come out yet. Um, people are more focusing on using the GPT model and the fine tune for those downstreaming tasks, for example. Open QA, close QA, wiki, whatever certain type of tasks. Um, okay. Um, introduction. I will skip over the introduction because I talked a little bit about it. And the, I think it's uh, important to see what the problem is here. Uh, so I, you can see this is a fairly straightforward. Um, the problem, this is how you want to train your model, right? Or say, you can either fr start from scratch, that's how people train the GPT-3, go from a random initialized matrix, and you try to make it bigger. And then you try to tweak the parameters of the phi to maximize the overall probability log, log sum probability, right? And then the issue become, suppose you can just say, I, I can decompose or break up the, the phi, the fine-tuned parameter phi into two factor. The first is the original model, or the model before fine tune, and the second one is the what do you say that? The incrementation of the, your model parameters, okay, the the the, the five. And then all you have to do is just keep the five zero and change and change the zero the, the, the five, right? And then you get. Equation number two, everything is the same compared to equation number one, except uh, this part, okay. And it turned out you can further 
represent the delta phi into this equation, which is delta phi of theta. And the theta is the actual amount of parameters you have to tune or learn. And like they mentioned, originally uh, phi zero is about 175 billion. And the delta phi equals to phi zero. Of course, the matrix size is the same. Um, but if you can get the delta phi a function of theta, and you see that the amount of uh, parameters in the theta is significant or very much smaller than phi zero, then the problem resolved. And th you don't have to uh, learn 175 billion parameters from your fine tuned data set. Okay. All you have to do is just probably just learn like a dimension 0.0%, which is 10,000, uh, 1 over 10,000 of uh, the size of phi zero, which is a mention that in their objection. So they were capable of reduce the number of parameters by 10,000 times. Um, in this case, suppose this is uh, 175 billion parameters, probably just a few million parameters, right? Uh, and uh, you may also ask, um, before they do this type of LoRa thing, are there any methods? Are these other methods good enough? And so why the Microsoft people are still looking at this issue? And the answer, according to the Microsoft researchers in this paper, is that they are, they are something, but they're not good enough. First thing is that you can say, because a GPT model is nothing but stack a bunch of transformer blocks on top of each other, uh, you can indeed insert additional adaptation layer um, into the transformer block or within the transformer block. According to the author, uh, this does not increase the, the computational cost that much. And then it's indeed also keep the number of that the number of parameters that needs to be trained small. But the only issue is that it introduce the inference latency. Um, because by some weird reason, uh, people are capable of uh, running the transformer model or GPT model in a parallel way. It's called model parallelization. Adding this additional transformer layer does not guarantee the parallelness. So you have to, like they mentioned, that um, I think there has to be process it sequentially, which means you have to first run through the transformer block, then run on through the adaptation layer, then keep for, feed forward. Uh, so you see the parallelism was breaked up here, and that increased the, the latency. And they have shown you a table, uh, which is shown here. They're saying that, um, when your batch size is large and your sequence length is long and the number of parameters you need, you want to adapt is small, um, indeed, you're not increasing that much of latency, which is shown in the adapter uh, sub L and uh, adapter to the H or sub adapter to the L. See, it's only adding about 2%, 2% of computing cost. Um, but when your best size becomes smaller, like your sometimes your inference, because your model is so big, you can only afford to run with the best sizes of just one. Yeah, sometimes. And your sequence length, suppose it's not long enough, um, and your suppose you have adapted a lots of layers, so your theta becomes large. And then you can see that the amount of time increase relatively is huge. It can be 20% to 30%. Um, but uh, in the method they proposed, LoRa, 
or the full full fine tune without doing anything special, the amount of inc time increase is small. You see what I'm saying? Okay. And then, oh, it's not. He didn't say small or not because fine tune and lower are the same thing. Now you will see in in the following explanation I have. But adaptation. Remember uh, anything that has the adapter, L or H is actually introducing more computational cost to the, to the transformer or to the GPT. So you can see sometimes it does increase the latency a lot, like 20% to 30%. Um, the other issue is, well, some people just say, uh, suppose I don't want to touch the model parameter at all. Uh, all I want to touch is the prompt. Like people nowadays, they're, they're doing prompt engineering, right? There are lots of books about prompt, uh, prompt engineering. And they teach everybody about how to do this. But indeed, like the author said in 2021, directly optimizing the prompt is hard. Uh, it all comes to something called a prefix tuning. I think it's time for me to apply some writing. I think in the next paper reading, I will try to cover the prefix tuning. It's a very interesting topic. It's very challenging um, because the prefix tuning, like the author mentioned around something here, I think. Hmm. Let me quickly go over what is prefix tuning. Yeah, here. The prefix tuning, I think in this paper, it covers two aspects or two, two approaches. First is called a uh, prefix embed, embedding tuning, uh, which is just insert special token among the input tokens. And the, it either prepend, or it's, it prepend and append such type of tokens to the prompt. And you can see that because those special tokens have never appeared in, or are the word embeddings that are not in your model's vocabulary. So you have to return your model. Uh, so what you have to do is just train, train this type of uh, word embedding for this special token. Is that clear? And this is at the input stage, okay? input and uh, suppose you you can suppose th then you can also treat the output of your first uh, transformer block as the input of the next layer right but that's not called input it's called activation right yeah you just uh, uh, you just uh, try to learn a word embedding or something called uh, activation after the embedding layer for certain special token, which, you know, I think intrinsically they're the same thing, but the only different thing is that um, prefix embedded, embedding tuning is only working on the input, but the prefix layer tuning uh, can be applied uh, on arbitrary number of transformer, transformer, transformer layers. And suppose the L is the number of transformer layers, the number of parameters you evolved in the, here is L times D times LP plus LI. Okay. So, so the, but, but like they also mentioned that this thing does not, although this does not increase the computational cost at all, but tuning this is difficult. So, pause the video and ask yourself is there a way that you can tune the model but without introducing Inference latency. Pause the video and think it yourself. Okay, so the answer is very simple. Because the, the requirement is not to increase the latency during inference. So the eventual model has to be exactly the same architecture as the model before fine tune. And every matrix every activation in the model 
after fine tuning has to be exactly the same as the model before fine tuning. You cannot add layers. Maybe you can remove layer, but it doesn't make sense. You cannot add layers. But during training, you can definitely do things, right? Adding time during training is okay, right? It doesn't affect your inference. Inference. So what they have to do is want to do is that you introduce another factor, which is not adding layer, but adding another decompose or break the current matrix into two parts. So the first part, like uh, the author talked about here, is like this. You break the matrix, or you break the the matrix in the transformer blocks into two parts. The first part is the matrix weight before fine tuning, or the second part is the incremental or the the changes happen to the matrix during the fine tuning. Okay, then eventually, like I mentioned. This matrix can be linearly added together, so end up with the same matrix as the matrix before you do the fine tuning. So the inference latency won't then change, right? And then it's fairly strategic to choose uh, or determine what type of the uh, incremental or the delta W structure used here. So suppose the W is the same as, the, or has the same size as the original W0, which is R in the space of D times K. Let me write it here, D times K. So what will happen? That means the amount of training parameters evolved in the fine tuning is still the same as before. You get this? Because the, you either tune the delta W or tune the original W. That's the same thing. Uh, this is why they also they assume that this delta W has a special structure, which is is indeed a matrix of low rank. For those of you who doesn't understand what I'm saying, um, I think you have to go to high school and revisit uh, the linear average algebra about what is rank. Uh, for those of you who understand, let's continue. Suppose that the W is a low rank matrix. So you can see it assumed the, 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 the W has certain structure. Then the W can be represented as through something called a low rank decomposition. It became D times R to two matrix. The first is the B, D, D by R, and the, the the second matrix is what? R, R by D, right? Sorry, okay. That makes sense? And in this way, you can see the number of parameters need to, needed to be adapted, be changed from D by, D by K to D, D by R, D times R plus R times K. And suppose R is significantly smaller than D or K. So you can see this one is much smaller than the D and K. And this is how these authors reduce the amount of parameters that are being needed to be adapted or changed during the fine tuning. And this is how they are able to say control uh, they're fine tuning to be very fast because they don't have to adapt a lot of parameters. Um, and that's, this is straightforward, right? Um, but let me ask you this. Um, is, is this the right thing to do? Or do you think it's uh, optimal? So my, my answer to this or my understanding to this is not optimal uh, because Suppose you do fine tuning on on by using uh on the delta w, but you do not assume it has a low rank matrix. Then you won't be able then you won't be able to do the low rank decomposition because suppose the delta w is it, it, the rank is 
you know, the, the, the highest rank of the biggest rank of the W can be the smaller of D or K, right? And then you cannot do this um, uh, low rank decomposition. Or say you, you can do the low rank decomposition, you then, but it has to be D by D, D size, and or D by K, right? Actually, you can see here, it's indeed adding an actual computational cost because the R is too big, right? So they, they made sacrifice by zooming the size of the, the, the W or the characteristic of the, the W is a low rank matrix, okay? Um, generalization of full fine tuning. I think that's what I just talked about. No additional inference latency. I just covered that. Um, yeah, practice. Yeah, this is a big game. You know, I just mentioned that it's less memory, faster, etc. And they shown the results on on the Roberta and the Diberta. I don't know what is the Dibert. <laughs> I don't know what the Roberta is. Um, but nobody is interested in the bird nowadays, right? So let's move on to not even people not interested in the GPT-2. Everybody got interested in the GPT-3. They have the results here. And you can see that suppose you do fine tuning, and this is the amount of parameters you have to handle. But uh, if you are just doing their LoRa, you can see they only have to do about dozens of parameters or a few, pro a few megabytes of, a few mega of parameters millions of parameters and the, the result is very surprising you can see that uh, compared to the fine tune on the whole matrix they even managed to improve the accuracy you see what i'm saying and then this is also interesting the, they didn't they when you when they adapt less amount of parameters they even get better results And this is a bit fit, only adapt bias. This is a, like we mentioned, a pre embedding. This is a pre layer. This is an adapter and the adapter, right? And um, that's covered all, all the things. And um, to me, I, my understanding that, uh, and that they also shown here, um, these results are roughly the same as, as talked about in the table four, this one. But the, all they talk about is that, so this is the number of training parameters. On the x-axis, the y-axis is the accuracy. So, uh, for any method, the more it close to the upper left, it's better. You know what I'm saying? Um, although you see when you do the full fine tuning, it's very close to the upper part. It's good, but there are too many parameters to be updated, so it's not uh, optimal. And but and you can see that. Their LoRa method is the only method that's that is closest to the upper left corner, right? Which is the best algorithm. All right, and then related works. There, they have a, put a lot of reference there. I mean, suppose you are really interested in this topic, you should read all of them. Um, but I'm not cover gonna cover this today. Um, there are, and also section seven, they're trying to understand the low rank uh, update. And uh, but this is an interesting part. Um, I think the authors are very nice to show us some of the analysis they have, other than just to show the um, accuracy or f scores. First of all, uh, they say, suppose you have a transformer block. Remember you have the Fourier key and the value matrix, and you also have the feed forward layer, right? A feed forward layer or has a matrix in the feed forward layer. There are five, oh, sorry, there are four main uh, matrices, and they are showing here query, key, value, and always a feed forward layer. And which layer they should update? Uh, they're saying that according to the result, I think. If you can just uh, update just one matrix in that transformer block, you should always pick up the before 
yeah, V4 is more effective. Uh, but if you if you can pick up, but but suppose you only allow to adapt a fixed amount of parameter. That makes sense. Um, because your either your your GPU limitation or your training cost is limiting you to train certain amount of parameters, which is fixed to be eighteen million parameters in this case. So you can either choose uh, to have a rank of four and also adapt the two matrix, but also you can also choose to make the matrix smaller, half a size, but it adapt the four all four matrices. The conclusion is that you should always adapt more matrices. You see here, this get the best result. Um, also, the results here, they're saying that uh, if you fix, you always update the query and update the, the value matrix is more effective than updating the key matrix, which, which is trivial, I think. Um, or they also play around with the optimal rank for LoRa. Um, uh, if you look at those results, what's the highest value here? Yeah, from what I see is that you you should always do this, right? For all four matrices, and then you can see that probably you can just do r equal to four, right? But it's very surprising to people that okay, even using r equal to one can get a fairly good result, right? You can see r equal to four. Maybe this can be r equal to one, right? It's the best. But uh, when R equal to 1, it's not bad at all, right? But the, the most important thing is to have the four, all four matrices updated. But in case you're interested in these uh, details, um, I think the officers, they do put uh, more details in the appendix section H, right? Uh, they also played with uh, something called sub subspace similarity between different R. Um, I personally think I f did not fully understand this section yet, so I would just not go into this. It's also because we're running out of time, so we're going to do this. Um, but what they're trying to say was... They're saying that they made they found or or they found something like this. They're saying that um, when the rank equals to eight or equal to sixty four, this is a adapt more parameters, right? What these two uh, decomposed low rank matrices, they share a same subspace of dimension one. That's what they claim. But from the figure, I didn't see that much. It's hard for me to see because this is all about uh, observation and, and there's not much uh, quantitative study of this. Okay, and how does the adaptation matrix compare to W? And this is more vague to me, um, but it's interesting they have done some analysis. Um, and this is a uh suppose they have done the single value decomposition of the, the w and uh, suppose they get a u and v left and right singular vector vector matrix of the, the w but they apply this on w q not the, the w right and uh, this is the, the when you just use the uh, the but the W and V obtained by WQ itself, you got twenty one plus twenty one something. But when you got uh, WQ, you can only get zero point three, which is very small. But this small is not that randomly matrix got small, right? If you use a really random matrix and, and get a U and a V and the apply to the WQ, and that result is almost zero, right? So that means there's some uh, correlation between the, the W and the WQ. That's my understanding. Uh, 
and their conclusion is okay let me read this because i didn't fully understand this i'm still trying to comprehend this this suggests that the low rank adaptation matrix potentially amplifies the important features for specific downstreaming tasks that were learned but not emphasized in the general pre-trained model. Okay. This is their conclusion. This is the first conclusion, like I just mentioned. Uh, second is that they only amplify the direction that are not emphasized in W. Yeah. So they're, 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 um, they're, how do you say that? The fine tuning finds something different than the original matrix. And they're saying that they changed the, the, the direction which was emphasized in original W, and the amplification factor is huge. Say that there's a uh, factor can be 21.5 for R equal to four. Yeah. Uh, okay. All right, I'm gonna stop here. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to comment under the comment section. If you like our video, please hit subscribe our channel and share the video with your friend. And if you're really into our channel, please hit the, the, the small bell button and so you get the first time notification. And finally, uh, we are a, actually a meetup in the Bay Area. So suppose you want to sponsor a um, local meeting room for us to have an offline meetup so that would be appreciated please send me a message and we'll see how it goes all right thanks again uh, for coming and let me know what you think best of luck